This is our Forex blog for May 31st, 2012. And like we've shown in the last couple of Forex blog videos, we have a new version that uh, has a currency meter that automatically sorts from strongest to weakest currencies. You can see this black chart underneath it. If you set up a black chart, you right click on it and you say set hot list rank option one, and you make it a particular color, like this case red, and then you set chart group option to A. Uh, if you do the same thing, on your charts, which we have actually hidden on a layer 20, you can see this uh, as I move this over, all these black chart placeholders. If I right click on here, all of these are set to the chart group option A. And what this lets you do is automatically sort uh, currencies and the currency meter that you wouldn't normally be able to because it's a live uh, only uh, tool. So once I uncheck layer 20, they'll snap back into place, and you can then link uh, to a quote sheet or hot list, which also keep in mind is red. They're all red. And by sorting this from strongest to weakest, the yen is the strongest. It's going up against 100% of other pairs. The Australian and New Zealand are second strongest. The euro, CAD, and pound, pound's the absolute weakest uh, right now. So. Uh, basically, this allows you to sort and see real time. Let me move this one over. It was uh, moved back for yesterday. Here you can see today's. Uh, it was the absolute weakest. So basically, you're looking to buy the strongest currencies versus the weak. And since the pound is on top of the dollar and the yen, you want to sell the weak pound versus the yen, either the Australian, and later on closer to 11, 20, 11, 30 here. Uh, the New Zealand. Now the dollar right now is experiencing some weakness, but earlier today it was also quite strong. Daily, weekly, monthly trends up. The 15 minute trends up. The hourly trend was down until about 9.30. Uh, at 9.30 all the time frames are up. Uh, but let's look at the pound versus the strongest one, uh, yen. You want to sell the pound yen. And so let me uh, just make sure that we're on today. This is yesterday's chart. Let's scroll over here. And we're looking for sell signals in the weakest one. You can see right here that and this is the hourly moving average right here. Underneath the hourly, it's more likely to go down. Above the hourly, it's, it's more likely to go up. This is one of the weakest currencies. It has some real-time strength that clearly shows it's going up. The, the move up here is up. The counter trend move down has less weakness than the move up does. And so, of course, it goes up. It has quite a bit of strength. Once it comes back underneath hourly here, you might have sold right here, lost eight or nine pips, shorted right here, uh, maybe made five or six pips, shorted right here uh, at 122.10. And you can see our trailing stop got you out down here at 73. You made close to 37 pips. And that's really the key to trading. Here's another sell signal here, which kind of you know went sideways. There wasn't enough of a pullback to give another sell signal, but always be aware of what the sell signal is. If you get a sell signal and the market's this weak, and it does try to go up, and it has almost no strength like this. It does. You don't have to be even somewhat intelligent to realize that when it breaks down through the lows here, even though there's no sell signal, you go short. Draw your fibs on this from the previous swing, and this is your first fib target where I would have probably gotten out of most of the trade because it's also a Fibonacci profit target. I spend 30, 40 minutes every night drawing fibs on longer time frame, weekly charts, daily charts, and four-hour charts. Find the most likely Fibonacci retracement, Fibonacci profit target. The dark gray areas are Fib profit targets, and the light gray areas, which uh, you don't see on this particular chart, are Fibonacci retracements. Let me just click on another chart and see if we have any of those that show up. These are both Fib targets also, very likely to be the max high in the dollar CAD. Notice this was a strong currency today. Buy signals up, buy signals up. Uh, the counter trend signals show up as circles. The trend trades show up as triangles. Uh, once you see a counter trend trade, if it's going sideways, you might want to exit half. But in this case, the trailing stop did a much better job and kept you in there for another 20, 30 pips. Just looking for a light gray uh, Fibonacci retracement level, which are probably, here's one right here in the pound dollar. This was a retracement area, acted as support once it broke it and went, it, you know, just absolutely collapsed. We saw that the pound was extremely weak today. The dollar was weak earlier today, but after, like I said, after 9.30, it was uh, one of the stronger ones. And so the sell signal right here fell about 50 pips. The sell signal right here fell, you know, 75 pips. And once it's underneath the, the green counter trend band, 
uh, it's very likely to reverse. So I probably myself would have got into position here. I would have lost on that position. I would have done personally a double position down here, uh, mainly because it's probably at the fib target of this last wave. Anything underneath the 3.0 band, I'll take a stab at it. If I lose, I'll double up on the next trade rather than scale into a trade, which if it goes against me, I can get, you can get killed doing that. I've, in one particular instance, I lost $10,000 in two hours by scaling into a big position. So now I get into a position, maybe lose seven or 800 bucks, small amount, double up on the next trade, uh, and usually make 25, 35 pips on at least 10 lots. So that's, you know, 2,500, 3,500, get, uh, get the 800 R loss back and uh, am up on, on those two trades. You only need one nice 30, 40 pip win to get rid of a bunch of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pip losses. Uh, and by using range charts, each of these bars is 5 pips per bar. So if your stop, let's say you bought right here, as it starts going up, your stop's underneath this low, which might be 7, 8 pips down, plus the spread, your maximum loss is only 10 pips. So you can lose 10 pips, let lose 10 pips, then make 30 and be up 10 on, and only be right one out of three times. Uh, and if you double up uh, on particular trades at a really high probability, um, because it's extremely far down, it's also near uh, a weekly S3 pivot, which is you know likely to be the, the week's low. It might be tested later in the week, but uh, or I mean uh, tomorrow, but uh, very high probability reversal area. It's worth doubling your lot size on that one. Anyway, now that I just showed uh, what a Fibonacci retracement area looks like compared to the Fib profit target, let's get back to uh, the currency meter. The dollar was strong. Another one that was really weak today on most time frames except for the weekly and monthly. Keep in mind the weekly and monthly trend, if you have some weakness today, it can easily go back and have some strong trend strength in the direction of the weekly and monthly. So, you know, I wouldn't anticipate as big a pip moves in the CAD as you would the pound that's weak on pretty much all time frames except the monthly. And the monthly I don't even care about personally except I'll bet bigger when all the time frames are up or down. You know, the yen clearly super strong as it was yesterday. There was a lot of great trades and pro very profitable trades yesterday as well as today. So let's look at uh, the CAD yen. You want to sell the CAD yen. So here's the chart. Sell signal down, sell signal down, sell signal down. And I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for new traders when all the time frame trends are down and, you know, you just sit and wait for the signal. When it goes one pip underneath the bar, you get short. And unfortunately, this one wasn't a big enough pullback up before it reversed. And, you know, this is kind of a weird pattern right here. Uh, this is actually a sell signal I would have taken manually. Computers can't recognize all these somewhat weird patterns uh, because this bar's uh, also closed up and it didn't take out these bars high. It didn't uh, generate a, tr a signal here. But anytime you have something that's this weak, the counter trend moves up, have one third or one half of what the previous move down is. That's a trend you'll want to take. Uh, keep in mind the lower red green band here is uh, usually on most days the end of the move. So. If you see it come down to that level, I'm going to exit myself personally somewhere between the first and second fifth target. It went slightly through there and stalled, uh, it looks like, at one of our trading zone areas. I would have been on this trade right here at 71 and would have not have caught the extra 30-something pips there. When it's this far underneath the lower band and it's this weak, you know, you can go ahead and give it a shot here buying, but double bottoms are a much safer bet, and then this is a 1-2-3 low. Once you form a, form a bottom, and it rallies up, especially in two waves like this. If it, if on the way down it doesn't break the 62% retracement right here, which this one really didn't, and there's also a counter trend buy signal, this is a really high probability trade. If you wanted to put a trade on with a 30 pip profit target and 30 pip stop and walk away, you could do that with this. Uh, you know, and not have to watch it go up and down uh, pip by pip. I would have put my stop here at 70, or I'm sorry, 40 right there, 40, 42. I would have entered this here at 60. So it's only a 20 pip stop. 30 pip profit target, 20 pip stop, uh, and it would have uh, hit the profit target right here at uh, 70. So if you set your stops and targets, a lot of times you get out of the trade too soon, but you don't have to watch it. Um, you know, and you'll find that when it's this far underneath the green band, especially when you wait for either double bottom or one, two, three low like this, you're going to get a good, uh, very high uh, winning percentage um, trades, even in some of the weakest ones. Now, it's not going to go up all day most of the time, but usually it's going to retrace to the 38% retracement level. So that's right here at 75.99, and it went to 75.96. It went three pips away from the 38% retracement, and I might 
have not drawn it on there perfectly. Let's, I think my high is a little higher there. And yeah, there we go. So 7598. It went to within two pips of that. Uh, and you can see that was a great resistance area. The whole numbers are also resistance areas too.